So in the next video, we want to start setting up the character for our game. Now, we can't just drag one of these entire sprite sheets onto the screen in sprite mode single. Well, we could, but it would look like this, and that's not correct, because we want to only show a single frame for each character at any given time. So I'm going to control Z and undo that. And what you want to do with these kind of sprite sheets, which have multiple frames, is change them from sprite mode single to multiple. Uh, now, you can do this in bulk by selecting all of the sprite sheets in a single folder uh, that need to be in multiple. So I'm going to left click on one, hold control down, and then left click on all of the other ones you want to add to this list that we're going to be changing at once. You'll notice the number in the inspector goes up as we add uh, extra selected files. So select all eight here, and then I'm going to go sprite mode single and change that to multiple. Okay, so now we need to take these sprite sheets and separate them by frame. So I'm going to go to the sprite editor, and then I want to go to the top left and hit slice, and you'll see type, which we want to change to grid by cell size, because we know the exact size of our frames across our sprite sheet. So it's 32 by 32 pixels, and uh, by having it set up like this, the number of frames doesn't matter because they're all the same size, so it'll slice it up correctly every time. So let's go ahead and hit slice for right now, and then we'll click on these different frames. So one problem we're going to eventually run into here, if we want to do sorting by Y position, is the pivot point of the character. So right now, the pivot point is set to the head, and if we sort by the pivot point, then that means that whether something shows in front or behind the character is dependent on this pivot point. So that doesn't make sense to have it be the head for this type of top-down character because we're more concerned with where the character touches the ground, which is much more down here at the feet area. So if we walk past grass, we want it to show in front or behind the player depending on if the feet are in front or behind the grass, not whether the head shape up here which is technically floating above the ground, is in front or behind the grass. So this will make a lot more sense when you can see it visually. But for right now, we need to move the pivot point for all of our frames much further down below for it to make sense. And I think I'm just going to put it at the bottom here, halfway in between both of the legs. But we can have a kind of snap to pixel if we want. So I'm going to go to the bottom right, pivot unit mode, and change this to pixels. And then let's drag it around until we have it at the pixel we want it to be at. So we can zoom in and we just want it to be roughly halfway between both of the legs. And that should be good. The horizontal left right position isn't going to be as important because we're only sorting by Y position um, top to bottom. So if we have it roughly there, we can give it a, a little bit of a nicer number here as the unit value. So I'll do, uh, let's say, 0. 105 and then for the x we can say 0 0.5 should be fine and then we just need to make sure that all of the frames of animation for our character have the same pivot point so i'm going to take the 0 0.5 and this value and i'm going to use that when i'm slicing the characters so in the top left let's go back to slice you'll see that pivot is an option here we want to change this to custom and then just paste the y value in which is 0 0.105. And then for method, I'm going to change this to smart. Uh, delete existing sometimes. If you just do that kind of recklessly, you can get missing references to frames or objects in your project. So I just tend to drift towards smart or safe just so that I'm not accidentally, you know, deleting frames that are actually being used across the game. So let's use smart slice and I'm going to hit apply. And uh, just make sure that all of these frames of animation, the pivot is set at the same location for consistency. And we can go to the second sprite sheet. So let's hit X here, save any changes. And let's click on the second sprite sheet, swing down. Uh, I'll hit save again so that anything is, uh, any updates we've made is already changed. Let's go to sprite editor. We'll hit slice. And you'll notice that it just remembers the settings we were just using from the last sprite sheet. So uh, custom pivot 0 0.5, 0 0.105, and just make sure pixel size is 32 by 32. Hit slice. We can click on the frames, verify that the positioning is good on the pivot. Hit apply. And we just need to redo that for all of these eight sprite frames. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Next one, slice, slice, apply, X, 
click on the next one, hit save, next one, slice, slice, apply, and uh, so on and so forth. Okay, and that's the last one. So if we take these um, individual sprite sheets and we click on the little play button next to it, then you'll see expanded each of the individual frames will show here. So those are the frames we're going to use for all of our animations. 